Okay, I'm going to start recording now. I think I'll get it started. Uh, I'm sure we get a couple late attendees here, but that's fine. Again, this is Ed Crow. We're going to talk about Medicare general agency strategy today, um, go over some details uh, with it. And uh, I will record this. If you have questions, uh, just send them into the webinar. Uh, and then when we get done at the end, I'll answer those questions for you. And um, having said that, let's get started. This will run probably about 20 minutes. Um, so if you have questions and I'm ignoring them, don't worry. I'm just not smart enough to answer them during while I'm trying to do the webinar. But like I said, at the end, I will answer them for you. So today we'll talk about a Medicare GA strategy, uh, go over contracting and overrides, releases, which is a big topic, um, how you're going to recruit if you're going to, if you're an agency that doesn't naturally have a lot of producers, how you can recruit new ones. Um, obviously, using our lead program can help. We offer a lot of programs. We're geared towards helping agencies grow. Um, it's kind of one of our main themes. Um, Talk about lists and emails, and uh, and kind of hit some details from there. So first, let's talk about contracting and overrides. So GA contracts pay money over the standard commission max set by CMS. Um, so let me explain. If, for those not familiar, if, uh, I do see I have some people in here who do know Medicare well, but if you're not familiar, when it comes to Medicare Advantage and Medicare prescription drug plans, the government, CMS, sets what the maximum commission can be. So the government says to the carriers, here's the most you can pay in a given state um, called max allowable comp. Here's the most you can pay to a street agent. A street agent is a person who is on a standard contract, is an individual, and not an agency contract. In the Medicare Advantage and Part D drug plan world, the only way you can get above CMS max is by having GA, MGA, or SGA agency contracts. It's the only way you can do it. So it's not loosey-goosey like it might be with life insurance or something like that. Medicare monitors all of this. It's very rigid, and they set the levels. Um, if anybody's curious, uh, if I remember, I'll just send it out or you can ask me. Um, the listed max CMS commissions is already out for 2021. So, again, the government sets it. So it's you know what you're getting. It's never, you know, so if you're getting less than that, that means you're below street. But almost most agencies and, and most carriers pay street. So when we talk about max commission, that's what we mean, well, what we're talking about. Um, overrides on Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans, MA, and PDP plans um, is paid on your own business as well as that of your subagents. So if you're set up on a contract as a GA, so you're above street, you're a GA, when I talk about general agencies and GA contracts, you as the GA on your own production, if you're writing, would also get the override on your own production in, it, in addition to the overrides um, that your subagents write. Um, subs can be set up at street level to be paid direct by the company. So in other words, we can set them up so maybe Bob has six subagents that he wants to write Medicare. He can do it a couple ways. The first way is he can set them up so they get paid the full street commission by the carrier, by the insurance company, direct to them, and then simply the override pays to his agency. So his agent's right. They're getting full commission, no reduction. doesn't cost them anything to work with Bob. Every time they write, they get an override on, he gets an override on their production, and he gets an override on their renewals when they pay as well. So override just pays to him direct from the carrier, and the agent's getting the commission direct from the carrier. The override's also paid on Bob's own uh, production as well if he is writing. And that, again, that override is on the initial and on the renewal. So they can add up, especially for people who build large books. That's specific to Medicare Advantage and PDP plans, which are CMS regulated. Now, Medicare supplements are not regulated by CMS. So this is a little less structured on the supplement side. So supplements, it's the same setup where they will pay an override above what they say their street contract is. Unlike with Advantage and PDP, supplements will have different street levels, so it's a little trickier, whereas like a United might pay more or less on a supplement than an Aetna or a Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, but regardless, they'll all have what they consider to be a street level, and that's the most an individual agent can get. And it works the exact same way. The initial setup is if you're a GA, you get the override on your own business, and when your sub writes, they can get the street commission paid direct to them, and you receive the override to the agency. Overrides and supplements are smaller than, than Medicare Advantage and PDP, however. And when it comes to supplements, it's a little different, whereas 
on Advantage plans, it's a set schedule of what's paid. Supplements, the carriers can have different commission schedules where like a United might pay a flat dollar amount or I see we got a JS up and holding holding down the Ford in upstate New York, an Excellus pays a flat dollar amount versus, you know, some companies will pay on a uh, percentage basis. So supplements, it's a little different. Uh, prescription drug plans pay a, an override, but it's much lower. I mean, you're talking about very small commissions anyway, so the override's very small on, on PDPs, but there is one. Now, if you want to be a general agent and you want to have sub-agents, one of the things you got to keep in mind is any state that you want to get overrides in, you've got to be licensed. You or your agency have to be licensed and certified for that specific carrier for you to get overrides. So if Shelly has a general agency and she has an agent under her who is writing plans in Rhode Island, Shelly has to be con uh, you know, licensed in Rhode Island, appointed and certified with that carrier to get overrides on her subagent's production. Just kind of a, a intricacy with, with Medicare. Um, so that's one setup. Street commission paid direct to your agent so it doesn't cost them anything and you just get the overrides. The other setup is commission assignment or LOA. What does LOA stand for? Not that it really matters, but it's a licensed only agent. Under this setup, what would happen is all the compensation would pay to you or the agency. So if you've got sub-agents, when they write business, if they're assigned commission or LOA, everything they, all the commission they get and the override doesn't pay to them, it pays to you or the agency. Now, with a GA, why do I say you or the agency? Because common misconception is people think, well, to be a general agent, to get a higher level comp on a higher contract, I've got to have a licensed entity, and you don't. Um, an individual can be a GA. So you don't have to have you know, Ed Crow doesn't have to have a licensed entity in order to be a GA, MGA, or SGA. So that's just a misnomer. But on an assignment or LOA contract, that agent writes, no problem. They still got to be contracted and certified, but you get all the comp with the idea then that you would pay the comp at whatever level was agreed at to that agent. The GA would be responsible to pay the commission to the subs. And often you'll see an assignment or LOA contract when it's a captive agency or Maybe you're putting them in an office space. Maybe they're working in your office. Maybe you're offering them leads or giving them some kind of other intrin um, uh, intrinsic value uh, that's justifying, you know, having them as an assignment or L LOA and paying them below street. Uh, that's a common occurrence and see it all the time. You especially see it with call agencies of, you know, telesales um, where they're paying for everything for that agent and then they're paying them less commission and less renewals. But that's the only way you can control how much they get is a commission assignment or LOA. Okay, so I spoke over my bullet point here. I guess I forgot I put it on there. Again, if you want to be a GA, MGA, or SGA, an agency, so a licensed entity or an individual can be that level contract. Most, so like I said, most companies will allow an individual to be a GA. So if you're getting this set up, and you, what we would do first is license you or your agency is the general agent, and then we would contract your subs, and depending on how you wanted them paid. Let's say you're going to have them paid direct street, and you're just collecting the override to make it simple. You would then have your subs fill out contracts, and then we would slide the subs under your agency. If you've got subs that are with other another upline right now, so they're writing their Medicare but through somebody else, they would need to be recontracted in order to move them. We can't, in the Medicare world, we can't just take um, Don, and Don's got another upline, but he wants to work with you. We can't just automatically slide him over. He's got to fill out a new contracting kit, and then we'll transfer him under your agency. So when you want to bring in sub-agents, you have them complete a kit, you have them send that kit to our office and give us instructions. Say, we're, uh, you know, this, this person's contracting with these three carriers. He's under us. Great. And then any future contracts he does, we'll put him underneath you. If an agent calls in and asks for a contract you don't have, which does happen, um, we will contact you and say, you know, um, Samantha's asking for this carrier. You're not currently set up. Do you want us to set you up? And you take that completed contract and you email it to Lisa or fax it to us. And that contracting kit then can be used um, to contract with any carrier you want. 
Initially, when you check off the carrier names on the kit, say, here are the carriers I want. Great, we'll set that up. If down the road you want future carriers, you don't have to do a new contract. You just call us and let us know. So how do you be a GA? Well, what's required? Well, I'm going to give you some examples here. So you can't just give, in the Medicare world, you can't just give anybody a GA. We used to be able to do that. Um, there were always requirements, but they were never enforced. Now they're enforced. So it varies by carrier, but I'll give you some examples. United Healthcare will say, okay, Ed, if you want to set, if Crone Associates wants to set this person up as a GA, MGA, or SGA, um, they're going to need themselves plus four subagents. So United, you need a total of four agents, and they won't let us do it without it. Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield requires three, Aetna three, uh, Humana five. It varies by carrier. Uh, some are as little as two total agents. It varies by carrier. Uh, but usually, at the least, they say yourself plus two other agents, so a total of three, usually. Anyway, if you need to know the requirements for a specific carrier, just simply ask us and we can tell you. Um, now, people will say, well, what if I want to be a GA, but I don't have enough subs? Well, what we'll do is, if you bring us two subs, let's say, we'll set you up at a GA level with the carriers that only require two subs. For the carriers that require more, we'll say to you, all right, we've got these two subs earmarked for you, but you need two more to get a United GA. So when the two more come in, whatever time that is, we'll simply side those extra two under you and then bump you up to the GA level because uh, you then can meet the requirement. So we were mentioned about releases. So we'll get to that topic now. Um, it happens a lot in Medicare. So if you want to work with agents who they want to work with you, but they're currently, they have a different upline. They're working with another FMO and they want to move under you. Well, if they're already with us as their FMO, that's easy. We can just move them, basically, with their okay. Uh, we really don't need to do anything there. But usually they're with another FMO. And if that's the case, the rules say that other FMO has to release them. So a release is a, a document, a signed document from that current FMO saying, yep, I'll release this agent. They can be recontracted and moved under such and such as agency with Crone Associates. Most carriers, will, they have a generic release that everybody uses. Um, we can send you a copy of it if you need it. Uh, some companies have their own releases, like Aetna has a specific one the upline has to sign. So if the upline will sign a release, no problem. They sign the release, you send it to us. We take that contracting kit the agent filled out, and we move that agent under you and us. What if they can't get a release? Um, the other uplines are under no legal obligation to provide a release, uh, and if some will give them and some won't. Um, so if the upline won't give a release, then what happens is the agent says, or we say to the carrier, this agent wants to work with us, um, they can't get a release, and then what we have to do is with the agent, we put in a notice to the carrier saying the agent wants to move from one upline to another, they can't get a release, and the carrier will then start the clock. And what that means is that they'll say, well, you want to move, you can't get a release, but um, you can continue to write business and we'll let you recontract in three months. Some carriers say three months, most of them say six. So without a release, a lot of times you'll have an agent waiting six months before we can move them, but they can still write during that time. It's just a, once the time frame expires, then we can move them. Now there I go talking over my slide again. So what I just said is right there. Um, some carriers like Aetna is three months, most of them are six, um, and they can continue to write. And uh, we'll just make a note in the system saying, all right, once the six months expires, we'll process that recontracting and slide them under us. So if you have an agency, you know, because there's street commissions with Medicare, um, an agent might say to you, well, why would I work with you versus the agency I'm with? What are you going to offer me? And that's where we come in. Um, in addition to helping you with the contracting and the know-how, uh, we have offer programs that you have access to that can make it worth it uh, and send that agent to work with you. We have a free Medicare lead program that's available to everybody, uh, the GA and their sub-agents. Basically, the way that works is if the agent will bring all their contracts to us, you know, under you and with us, then they are eligible for our free lead program. And the lead program says they get 500 a month, 100% reimbursement, up to $500 paid from us per month towards their cost for leads, marketing, or advertising, as long as it's for Medicare. All they do is take their paid receipt, 
send it to us and we reimburse two times per month, but they can get a max of 500 a month. So we have a built-in lead program um, that you can use to recruit. Um, they, there's no minimums to start, which is really nice. Um, and they can use any kind, any company they want for leads, any kind of advertising, any kind of marketing, as long as it's for Medicare, we'll reimburse it. So it's a super unique program. It's a value you can give them uh, to work with you because, you know, you're giving them the lead program and we, Crow and Associates pays for it. You don't have to, which is nice. After six months of 100% reimbursement, the reimbursement then thereafter um, goes to 50%. But your subagents and yourself can still get up to 500 reimbursed a month. So once it's 50%, if you're submitting $1,000 worth of expense per month, we'll reimburse 50% of that up to 500 bucks. We give you other programs as well to help you recruit and to help with your own um, production as well. So we have online enrollment using Connect for Medicare. Connect for Medicare is unique because it's a site you go to. It's one site. You log in. It's personalized to you and you can enroll prospects online uh, through an email link or through a text link. So you can pick out the plan they want, they can't mess it up. You send them a link, they can only enroll in that plan and it's automatically coded to you and there's no wet signatures needed. You can also do an electronic scope with it as well. Um, and you, right now you can email it, but as of October, you're gonna be able to text it too if you want. We'll also give every agent their own website personalized URL, um, and that's a consumer safe, consumer safe, I could say it, that's a consumer facing CMS site, it's approved, and your prospects can go on there, quote plans, compare plans, run drug comparisons, and anything they enroll in, um, you'll get credit for. And this, both sites work for Advantage, Supplement, and Part D carriers. In addition to that, we'll give you, you and all your agents their own personalized online quoting tool, so they can go online and they can quote all lines of business, quote, compare, make comparisons, uh, check benefits, run companies side by side for Medicare, all Medicare plans, uh, term, UL, final expense, annuity, long-term care. Uh, they can run all the quotes, hospital indemnity plans, so you can quote in every state, everywhere with all the carriers through that quote tool. And the nice thing is you don't even have to have those other lines of business with us to use it. So. If you've got one contract with us, you have, a, you have access then to the online quote tool uh, for all lines of business. Like most other uplines, we have application processing, and again, we'll give you access to all lines of business if you want it. As far as actually reaching out and recruiting the agents, I'd be happy uh, offline, one-on-one -on -one with somebody to talk about how we recruit, you know, how we built the agency um, when we started recruiting. Uh, we can provide email lists of agents, uh, give you ideas of what you could pitch to them, and it's usually the lead program, online enrollment quote tool, that kind of thing. Um, but we can definitely talk to you about ways to actively recruit agents um, and reach out to them and try to get them under your upline. Existing agents that write Medicare will be certainly interested in the lead program, the online enrollment as well. Um, PNC agencies are great candidates for this. A lot of times they have a huge book of business. They're not doing Medicare because they just don't know how or haven't tried. Um, and if you can work with a PNC agency, uh, have them get a producer or two in their office, um, that can be a, a really great source of sub-agents for you. Same thing with health and life agents too. You'll have some agents that want to ease into Medicare. Um, a lot of times people will say, well, I don't want to do Medicare because I don't want to take AHIP. That's a uh, for those who don't know, AHIP's a designation you take online every year. And we can talk to you about strategies for bringing in agents, easing them in, meaning have them, having them write products where they don't need AHIP, so they don't have to do that AHIP certification online every year. An example of that is you can write United Healthcare. Most people don't realize, but United doesn't require AHIP. They're one of the only carriers that doesn't. So you can write their Advantage Supplement in Part D without taking AHIP, you simply take United's online certification, takes a few hours, once a year, uh, and then you can write, you don't need the AHIP designation. That's a good way to get some agents started and into the business um, without them needing to do AHIP as well. Not that AHIP is rocket science, it isn't, but it is time consuming. It takes three or four hours to complete. So that's a good way to get them started without making them you know, spend that much time. So again, street agents are paid full comp, so it literally costs them nothing to work with you as a GA. Uh, if you want to really actively recruit numbers with agents, you got to stand out by offering them value. 
So you got to think, you know, what's going to make them want to work with me versus another upline? And again, that would be all the tools we talked about um, as far as the lead program, online enrollment, our know-how, which we will share with you. We will help train your agents if you'd like. Um, all those little things to get them to work with you versus somebody else. Most agents are looking for perks like we offer, and they're looking for guidance, which we can provide as well. Once you get that subagent, what you do is have them fill out a contracting kit. We'll handle the contracting for you. We'll put it in. Um, but what I strongly suggest is Medicare contracting has grown more complex. So even though we'll put it in for you, the carriers will send out additional links to your subagents to make them complete the process. And I strongly suggest if you're building an agency, you check in with us at least once a week. Uh, Lisa in my office does nothing but handle our agency's contracting. So check in at least once a week to see, you know, what's the status of our subagents? Have they gotten some links they haven't completed just to stay on top of things? Also, you might want to check on releases too, because if you want some agents to come work with you who are with a different upline, you know, you got to see if they were able to get a release or not. You'd want to have that conversation with them as well, but you certainly can check with us. The hardest part about growing an agency, uh, and I firmly uh, believe this, is the contracting and following up on the transfers, you know, the releases. It's the hardest piece of it. Once you get the agent set up and contracted, much easier from there. And I see I have some people on here that can attest to that. Uh, that is the biggest challenge in the Medicare world. We'll definitely work with an agency to um, help develop a game plan or with your agents for that matter. So if you're bringing in subs, you know, how are they going to generate new sales? Um, you know, we work with a lot of agents and a lot of agencies. So we can help you develop a game plan for recruiting agents, and we can also help your agents develop a game plan for generating sales. And usually there's just a few ways they do that. There's seven or eight different strategies, places you use, and we can give you the best practices for those. Um, but you'd want to show these agents all the programs you have available, uh, you know, the lead program application processing, contracting, Connect for Medicare. Uh, we partner with Pinnacle. We use a lot of their resources. You have full access to that as well. So the PFS insurance website, uh, maybe you want to talk to them about other lines of business because we offer everything. We can put you as an upline on any line of business. Um, and then we'll help uh, supply orders because the one thing we often don't think about is, well, you know, my agent maybe isn't comfortable with doing online enrollment. How does he get his supplies? Well, you know, we'll help put in those orders as well. That was it, short and sweet. Just wanted to give you a quick run through of being a general agency. The one thing I'll mention is I used acronyms of the GA, MGA, and SGA. So GA is one level above the street. If you get enough sub agents, then we can move you to an MGA. Usually the carriers require 10 subs for that. And then an SGA pays an even higher override, um, but that requires the most sub-agents. And depending on carrier, SGA requires anywhere from 25 to 50 uh, sub-agents in order to be an SGA. And your override amount simply just goes up at every level. Let me look and see if we have any questions at this point. Like I said, I like to keep these calls pretty short. That one actually went over a little further than I'm used to. Um, but let me see if we have any questions here. Okay, so I'm able to see the slides, but I'm unable to hear, hear you. I'm wondering if it's just me. I think, you know, obviously you're probably not hearing me if you're saying this, but um, I think it's just you. Um, so, like I said, I know you can't hear me now, uh, I, but whoever this is, I will get the, uh, you know, certainly get this out to you, um, the uh, recorded webinar, so you'll be able to hear it then. Next question. So we have a few good questions here. Do we do we need the agent to sign an agreement with us before they sign the agreement with Crow and Associates? No. Um, when they sign the contracting kit, that's all we need to set them up. Now, if they're a street agent, meaning they're getting paid full street by the carrier, there's no need for you to sign any agreement with them. If they're going to be an LOA or a commission assignment, then yeah, you'll need an agreement because you got to determine how much you're going to pay them uh, when that commission comes in. So you want to have an agreement there. We can suggest some things. Um, there's a bunch of things you'd want to put in there that you wouldn't otherwise think about. But if they're going to be street, being paid direct by the carrier, you probably don't need an agreement. Um, so what happens when you recruit someone who is contracted with a company that you are not? Do you get an override on production with that company? No. Um, the way it works in Medicare is if you recruit somebody 
who's got a couple carriers that you don't have, we will call you and say, hey, this agent's asking for these carriers. Do you want to add the carrier so you can get overrides, or do you want them, want us just to contract them direct? But we won't do, do it without you asking you. So you do need to be contracted with the carriers in order to get an override on their production. Okay, somebody else said they can hear me just fine, so thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, another question, so can I start as just a single independent agent? Um, I have my own one-person agency. Yes, of course. Um, you would fill out a contracting kit. We have hundreds of just single independent agents. Um, some don't want to do an agency. You now, having sub-agents, has all, you know, there's a lot of work involved with that. So yes, we gladly work with independent agents, um, probably more independent agents than agencies even for that matter. So certainly, I'd be happy to work with you in that regard. It looks like, those are good questions, by the way, and it looks like that's all of our questions. Um, all right, well, if you have any other questions for me, feel free to uh, uh, reach out. You know, give me a call, send me an email, be happy to talk to you. My contact information is on the slides there below. And again, you'll all get a copy of this recording as well. So, oh, I think I have one more question. Let me just answer this one, and then we'll wrap up. Let's see, this question is, Will there be one on life? Well, life insurance really works very similar. I haven't done many GA life insurance. Uh, it's, life insurance is actually easier, quite frankly. Uh, we have a lot more flexibility with the levels that can pay. Um, and usually to get like a, a low level GA on life insurance, you only need one sub agent. You really don't need more than that. Um, I can even sometimes put somebody at a GA if it's just them, if they write some business. Um, so. Life insurance really works the same way. You fill out a contracting kit, it's all one kit, and that kit allows you to just choose any line of business. Um, and when you have an agent send it in, you just let us know they go under you, and we could then move you to GA. So it's, it's all very flexible, um, much more flexible on the other lines of business, annuity, life, um, you know, LTC, uh, term UL, um, much easier than with Medicare, much less um, uh, restrictive, I should say. So good question, yes. We can we can handle GA levels on life insurance as well. And our quote site will quote life insurance and we certainly support life insurance as well from a back office standpoint. All right, well, good questions today. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.